Hey guys, today we are taking a look at Kerbal Space Cro program. <laughs> program, no program. This is an um, it's an indie game, and it um, it has a lot to offer. It's a very addictive game. I'll, I'll give it that much. So Kerbal Space Program, what is it? Basically, you have to design your own rocket, and you have to go to space and explore various planets and all that stuff. But, um, obviously it's, it's a lot more than that, it's, uh, you know, got a bit more depth than that, obviously, but, still. It has some, this game actually has some really cool mechanics, like, it has, like, really good orbital mechanics, and, um, and, like, space flight mechanics, which I'm guessing are pretty realistic, given how hard some of them are to learn. But, yeah, let's open it up, I'm gonna resume my saved game which is in career mode. There's two modes, it's career and the sandbox. Career mode, you have to, um, what you do is you complete various tasks and you earn science points, which you can then, um, proceed up the tech tree with. Now, um, I'm not, like, that far through. I ha I've, um, managed to get to the Mun twice, I think, so far. Actually, three times, but I've never actually managed to successfully land there. The first time I um, I got there, and pretty much just failed. I did I didn't quite have enough fuel to actually get into the gravity of the planet, so I just um died. The second time I came into fast and died, and same with the third time. So, given by that little um depressing <laughs> speech there, this game is quite hard. It's not an easy game to master. Uh, this game does have. I have seen people use like some in-game cheat editor. I'm pretty sure it's built in. Um, I don't. I've never used it. I don't want to use it. You know. This game is one of those games that you're meant to sort of. It's meant to be hard. So if we open this up, this is our rocket builder, or alternatively, you can also build space planes, which are more like. I guess a real life equivalent would be a space shuttle. But yeah, so to make a rocket, several things you do. There are a lot more parts than this, by the way. This is like a, f a tiny fraction of the total amounts of parts there are. As I said, I'm in career mode. You unlock more parts as you research more things in the tech tree, and I'm not that far up the tech tree. So you can create all sorts of rockets. There's like I've seen creations on this game that would just blow your mind. They are some pretty crazy things, so some some of the user creations for this game. So we're just gonna create a basic little rocket here. Just show you how it all works. So you got your you need your command pod to actually be able to fly the thing. You need some fuel. Otherwise you could probably gonna have some challenges actually getting into space without any fuel. You need some engines such as that or that depending on which you prefer. There are lots of different types of engines the more thrust the faster you can go the more fuel they'll guzzle at full speed so yeah. Um, but also there's like decouplers and things so if I just like put I don't know four of these Or something and then we put a solid fuel booster this is like a really weird rocket but this is just you know I'll show you one that's actually has some thought put into it later on so if we just put those solid fuel boosters on there and we put parachute there give um, some battery packs So, actually, let's not put one. Let's just put two. As you can see, this game has a symmetry mode. So sometimes it can be a little bit rebellious. So sometimes you have to just go and place things manually. It's not a perfect symmetry mode, but it generally gets what you need to do done. Oops. Uh, there we are. So I'm just quickly putting together a really 
crappy little rocket that will probably fly. <laughs> Emphasis on the word probably. And boop. Put some of that on. And let's just do that. Find a decoupler. So if we just get this little thing here and we try and launch it, it should fly quite well, theoretically. Now this isn't a tutorial video on how to like do well in this game or anything, this is just my opinion on the game and what I think of it. So here we are on the this game has cockpits which is pretty cool. This one's um you can't see much out of it. There are better ones with um significantly better visibility, thankfully. But this is just um you know, basic rocket, nothing fancy. Put SAS and RCS. RCS is your thrusters, which I actually don't have, so I don't even need that on, but SAS is your stabilization. If you don't have that on, you're probably going to, like, go all over the place, unless you want to manually keep it stable, which is, by the time you get to orbit, there will not be that much in the way of, um, <laughs> you know, a uh, salvageable orbit. It'll, like, be rotated, like, all the way, like, up this direction when you need to be flat or something. So as you can see, we're away. Rocket is in the sky, heading up into space and all that good stuff. Now this rocket, I doubt it'll actually be able to make it into orbit. It hasn't got enough power. It hasn't got enough fuel, rather. But as we can see, we got this dude, Jebediah, like the god of all Kerbals, which are your little people in this game. This game has a sort of, um, has a very, uh, oh, so you see now that stage is done, so we need to decouple, move on to the next stage. So this, ro this game has, like, realistic staging and all that for rockets. Anyway, as I was saying, Kerbals are little people, and about this game, in its sort of tone, it's got a very sort of comical tone, rather sort of Bases, blah, 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 English failure. Rather, um, it emphasizes sort of a comedy sort of atmosphere, I guess, rather than like more of a serious game. And I, for this sort of game, I personally prefer a slightly more serious tone, perhaps, given how serious all the game mechanics and how tricky this game actually is. The sort of comical style of this game and the, um, and the realistic mechanics sort of are a slightly odd, odd um, couple. But other than that, is that's purely subjective, though. I mean, you may like the more comical approach. I, I like it in its own way. It's still cool. It's it's no game breaker or anything. I mean, it's still a great game. So now I'm just trying to get into orbit. I have done this a few times. <laughs> And this is a terrible orbit. It's like absolutely abysmal. But <laughs> proving my point that this game can be quite hard. I'm not quite sure how I screwed the orbit up there. I'm guessing I just wasn't watching because I was too busy trying to um, find things to say. But, um, yeah. So now we're trying to make up an orbit. And this is actually not a bad little spacecraft, to be honest. So, um, certainly got some power behind it. It's probably, it's not going to make it to the, to the moon, which is just, like, the moon. It's just a little play on words. And we might be able to get an orbit. No, I don't think, no. Okay, that's, that's what we managed to accomplish for an orbit. Almost an orbit, but you rarely manage to get to orbit on your first try with a new spacecraft. Well, sometimes you do, but hey. So now we just decouple. And, you know, there we go. 
we are pretty much... This game obviously has a fast-forward mechanic. If it didn't, you'd kind of be a little, um, stuck. <laughs> I mean, you need a fast-forward mechanic, or, like, you'd spend, like, six days getting to the moon or some shit like that, so... It is necessary, but it's not very well implemented. The thing is, um, we're done here, you know. This is, um, not gonna accomplish anything. But, now I'm just gonna load up my, my actual rocket that I'm using. And there, in a minute, we are. So, this is the mighty nomad Nomad thirteen yeah, thirteen. <laughs> Roman numeral recognition failure. <laughs> but the mighty Nomad thirteen is the rocket that I have managed to get to the Mun twice, but never actually managed to land it. <laughs> but hey, you can't win them all. So this is it. My current rocket that I'm using. Not perfect, could do with a bit more fuel. It's a little dodgy, and actually I scrapped the Nomad 13, because actually the Nomad, uh, what was it, Nomad 11 was better, but actually more powerful. I think it was the um, 11 anyway. Yeah, it was the 11. But anyway, if we just go ahead and... Launches. As you can see, this rocket's a tad bigger, you know. One could argue it's slightly bigger. But, um, it's got a lot of stages. So if we just go to launch, you'll see that this one's a, um, not quite as stable, because it's a lot bigger, a lot more parts. So you need to add some structural bracing in, just to, um, Make sure everything's stable. As you can see, it kind of wobbles a bit. But here, I'm just going to illustrate my point that the fast forward mechanic is sort of a little um. It's. I don't know. It's just a little um. Crude. It doesn't really work very well now. This is an older version of the game. I haven't actually updated it in ages because I fear that I might lose all my save progress. But um, I s I'm not sure if that's still the case. But as far as I'm aware, it still is. So if we just turn SAS on, and we lift off, we will see that we can, like this this rocket is perfectly stable, I mean nothing wrong with it, flying perfectly straight, but as soon as I bump the speed up, oh how tragic, whoops, it's like, just twists all over the place <laughs> and yeah and all this all this mechanic should do is speed the game up but it physically makes you unable to actually speed the game up unless you're in space and not really doing anything much but um yes yeah, so we just revert back we'll actually um do a flight but that was just illustrating my point of what can happen with the um with the fast forward mechanic. So, yeah. Let's just let this rocket fly into space. And while doing so, oh yeah, this um, has a slightly nicer cockpit. And this game can, can be quite immersive. I mean, Sometimes you're like flying above the planet, you see it below you and you feel like, oh my god, this is kind of precarious, this is like really dodgy. And it kind of does give you that epic sort of I'm in space feeling once you're there. Which is um, partly helped by the fact this game has a decent soundtrack, it has a few nice pieces of music that, um, that add to the atmosphere. Or perhaps the lack of atmosphere <laughs> in some cases. But um, yeah. This game is pretty immersive in most ways. Like, the cockpits are cool, and sometimes it's quite cool. I don't know where the Mun is right now, so I might not be able to see it, but sometimes you're, like, you're just like flying around. Oh, look, there's the Mun. 
it isn't, but sometimes I don't. I think it's on the other side of the um. Yeah, it's over there. I can't see it from here. But yeah, let's just go back there. And I'm gonna try and make an orbit, and if possible, try and um, you know, actually get to the moon, if at all possible. Just to um show you the mechanics that are in play with this game. So we're almost done with this stage of the rocket. So we will soon be separating and all that. And as you can see, I'm desperately running out of things to say now because um, I'm not quite sure there's not really anything to say right at this moment. So, we'll skip forward and I will be with you in a moment. For you, anyway. So, I have now managed to make it into an orbit. Um, it was really terrible, actually. It's not, I didn't actually even make orbit. I don't even know if this will actually work. I've never tried this before, but, um, I, do, I just don't seem to be able to get into, into orbit while recording. It's just like, no, sorry, can't do it. Just like, no. Yeah, I'm just going to end up falling back to the planet by the looks of it here. All my telemetry is changing and I'm screwed. But, it's going to illustrate how tricky this game can be. I normally have no problem getting into orbit whatsoever. It's just... No, just can't now. It's always when you're, like, recording and you need to get shit done, it's just like, nope. But anyway, at least I can show you re-entry, which we'll have to settle through. Settle through? Settle for, should I say. So we've lost orbit, because I'm a scrub. For some reason I just can't make orbit. Oh shit, we're burning up. So I'm going to go and eject everything that I don't need. And... Project those. And you see this is my little lander, which is supposed to land on the on the moon. And this thing doesn't have any um any wings or anything. It's not designed for re-entry onto this planet, but it is designed for re-entry onto the other planet and this planet, so it has a parachute, so that's fine. And um some aspects of this game you can um like, get science points from discovering various things with science modules you equip on your spacecraft. And you got the 0 0.1 science points there, because um, it wasn't really... Because uh, I've done that several times before. This game, you can do each thing a few times. Each um, experiment a few times before it's invalid. Oh. So what you can do, say I could like this mystery goo is a science module thing so I could eject it here get some points because I'm in the upper at well I'm actually in the lower atmosphere here but when I was in the upper atmosphere I could have got some points there I can eject it here points in the sea points some of the different biomes on um, Kerbin which is the, the main planet you're on this one here and get some and some in the spaceport and some on the moon and some on all the other planets and that will get me some science points for doing that and you can choose to either keep the data for when you get back to the planet. There's my chute deploying there. The chute is like the chutes can feel really dodgy on this game, but it did open up thankfully. They almost always do. But what you can do, if you can, if you think you'll make it back, what you do, you just you know make it back to the planet, and then you'll recover the vessel. You'll see that in a minute. So or you can extend and transmit the data, and you'll get like. A, s a smaller amount of the science points you would have got if you don't think you'll make it back to the planet, you use that option. But we're just drifting down, now we can just fast forward it. And also, you, um, once we land, almost there. Boop. And you can, your crew, you can do a crew report. 
and you can evacuate your dude or however many people you have. I just have a small cockpit so I only have one um one crew member. This dude can thankfully swim. And I quite like the um you've taken a sample of water, it appears to dramatically increase the surface humidity of surface humidity of anything it touches. It's a little bit of the humour from this game. Um and we've done that. Got a few science points for that. Store experiments. And then we can just get into the ship again. Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> and then we can recover the vessel and we'll get whatever science points that were stored in that vessel. Rather than having tr rather than transmitting it. So we would have got a few science points for that. So yeah, that is um a very small amount of Kerbal Space Program. It's a lot deeper than that. If we just exit out of here, I have no idea why I actually went into here. Uh, that's right, I, I, I remember now. But we'll I'll show you that in a minute. If we go over to here, you'll see there are quite a few planets to explore. That's only one of the, that's a moon of one of the planets. Then we got like Minmus. There's all sorts of different I think Minmus is actually um a moon of Kerbin as well. Yeah, yes. But we've got all these planets. You got Moho, Eve, Kerbin, Duna, Dress, Jewel, Elo, and I think that's it. But each of them have their own moon system. I'm not sure all I haven't been to them. But I've you know I do I have heard of it, yeah, so then this planet has Ike. And why don't we even go like inside the sun? <laughs> yeah, I guess you could if you so very wished to do so. But it has sort of, you know, gas giants and all that, I'm guessing. This looks like a gas giant to me. With all your moons. But yeah. I won't waste your time showing you every single planet if you want to do that. You should um buy the game. I don't think it's too expensive. I got this game quite a while back. And that's hence why it's quite an old version. And then I played it for ages and then I kinda like just well not ages, I played it for quite a while, then just stopped playing it. Just kinda like forgot about it. But anyway, um yeah, I'll just go inside here. Just show you that you can get space planes, which are pretty much like space shuttles. This one failed abysmally because I don't actually have any good wings or any, or actually I don't have any undercarriage or landing gear, so I can't actually make it take off yet. I mean, I can do this, which was um the best I managed to get, but I can't actually control this thing. It's kind of quite funny actually. I just want this for exploring curve and getting some points, but. So. <laughs> yeah, so. That's pretty much what happened with this thing. I did manage to get off the ground a few times, but it just kind of, you know, came right back down. Oh, they're flying around. They're going flying, look at them. Almost a kilometer away. Anyway, so this has been Kerbal Space Program. I hope that you enjoyed the showcase of this game. And I will see you on the next one. Oh, actually, before I see you on the next one, there are train. there is training on this game. There are a lot of good user-made tutorials too, but there's some basic training. I mean, the To The Mun one doesn't exactly um, teach you everything you need to know about getting there. You're not going to be able to get there just doing that tutorial. But um, they give you the basics. But I recommend you do all these... Uh, well, I definitely recommend you do all these tutorials before trying anything. It'll just be like, lol, how do I Kerbal Space Program? Anyway, thanks for watching, and see you on the next one, everyone.